April was more than just a religious holiday. The same time was used to kickstart that 1% value-added tax or VAT increase that brought the general rate to 15%. This increase was announced by former finance minister Malusi Gigaba in his uh, February budget speech. Diapolo Peko is a financial analyst who is also a social activist and she joins us in studio to talk about the uh, possible impacts of this increase. So nice to see you. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, I mean, and, you know, yesterday also had another uh, connotation to it, April Fool's Day. Yeah. But it certainly wasn't April no Fool's joke, Day. Sadly. This is no joke. This yeah. is the reality of what's happening. And the reality is, is that, that this is affecting the lives of every single South African. We cannot just isolate it to one group. Everyone's being affected. Certainly. I mean, there's been a fallacy that only middle class and middle, middle income earners are going to be impacted on this. It's not really true because obviously when we see the, the list of exempted food exemptions, for example, it's a very narrow little list, you know, rice, millies, um, vegetable oil, not even different kinds of oil, yeah. um, you know, no margarine, no, no peanut butter. So it makes assumptions about the kinds of foods that working class or low income families and communities are, are consuming, which is a very small list. And it also makes assumptions about the sort of the health risks which are associated to that very narrow pool of foods. Um, of course, we know that things like fuel... Um, pet, uh, paraffin. There are some minor examples with paraffin, but we don't. Th this this VAT doesn't take into consideration that food preparation takes electricity and other forms of fuel. So one way or the other, everybody is impacted. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there, therefore, for viewers, if you're at home and you're wanting to know, these are the zero-rated uh, goods, which means that no VAT is going on to them. And this is tiny. This list is tiny. It's and uh, I mean, if we look at this, so. Uh, some of these are basics, but I mean, you know, from what I'm just looking at, I mean, there is no protein added into this. Hardly there's any. No, there's no it, cheese. Um, I mean, it's legumes. There's no meat. There's no fresh fish. There's just two two kinds of canned fish. Yeah. Um, it's also takes. It doesn't also take into consideration people, you know, school children that what they're going to have in their lunchbox, whether there's sufficient variety or that meets all of the food groups. So this VAT doesn't take into consideration things like health, cons health, yeah. um, health and well-being, and kind. Of of lifestyle choices it, yeah. it, it, it presumes that you're only going to be able to access this very narrow list of a few items um, and I think that added to that is things like access to health care so VAT is, is there is no VAT on medical supplies or medical services at provincial level at provincial hospitals however at, med, at, at municipal local government level medical health facilities there are subject to VAT so there's a lack of rationality um, so this goes and back to the whole idea that there need to be a broader and rationalized pool of exemptions for um, you know what we call essential services so yeah. health, um, education um, primary secondary and some tertiary currently is VAT exempt not all books however are VAT, VAT exempt, exempt. So, so what are you going to be reading so in school it is yeah, it's, it's very very confusing it needs to be much better it needs to be much better and thought out than the, this the, the talk around all of that was that this was going to be altered and that you would see sort of some changes and perhaps that that list would get longer and well, perhaps, see more well i mean is it going to happen well, that, because that takes consumer lobbying that takes these sorts of conversations leanne because i mean certainly different countries do this differently yeah um different communities different you know stakeholder groups you know have, have have argued that things like um, you know cultural services and goods ought to be exempt um, things that are related to education as we've already mentioned um, things that are related to small businesses ought to be ought to be exempted so there's some strange anomalies international travel for example of um, movement of goods and people by air that is um, VAT exempt at the moment so it's a strange thing I think another thing that, that we really need to drill into is who is who is paying taxes and what is the bulk of the tax bill mm. um, and, and what are the other instruments that might be available to make up this 50 billion rand shortfall that we're that you know that that, that the fiscus is, is looking for so for example import tariffs are, are, are an instrument that many countries have shied away from because they fear that it's going to fall foul of World Trade Organization um, um, regulations but we have we are we're not at the top of our tax ceiling, of our, ta of our tax ceiling that re in that regard. So if we were to increase very slightly our import tariffs on 
cars, for example, your luxury, you, you know, your, 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 your sort of not luxury items, but items that are, that co that are fairly costly, um, electronics, um, cell phones, TVs, etc., we would be able to make up a huge amount of this shortfall in a different way. And it yeah. also doesn't also, ha it doesn't have to be a flat 15%. That's another thing. The different models of VAT, we could have a sliding scale of how we may want this sort of tax to actually come into place. Let's have a look now. Now, um, I mean, I think we, we, we're covering as much as we can from the food to the electronics and mm -hmm. alternatives that could have existed. But let's look as it stands today. Here's a nice comparison <coughs> of what you were paying uh, in March and what you're going to be paying now. And this is with that, uh, the, the, the uh, cost and effective that's come in 15% VAT. So everything has pretty much so gone up. And this will give you a little bit of a, a, mm -hmm. a, an idea mm -hmm. of what has changed. So. I think the you know you've got your groceries that have gone up sort of 18 rand. Um, that's not exempt, obviously. Car insurance has gone up six rand if you aren't paying 500 rand. Medical aid stays the same. Car instalment that's gone up one rand. Um, uh, the rent and the bond. So a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, that's not too bad. It's not too good either because all of these things add up um, to other services. Remember that. Um, so that when you go to the bank, for example, banking services are also v subject to VAT. Yeah. Every time you get a, your bank statement on your, on your, by, via SMS, that is now going to be, um, you're now going to pay for that unless your bank has a free service, free. Yeah, um, yeah. things like that. Um, you know, nothing's a lot, for free, nothing, unfortunately. There are no free lunches, you know, your EFT transactions, your credit card transactions, a whole bunch of things are going up. So this is not, this is not just this list. And I mean, this is eight, I mean, 18 rands here, 20 rands there, 17 rands yeah. here. Remember also that this is coming in concurrent with the sugar, the sugar tax. So this is almost like an extension of the sin taxes. So, you know, food, the, the, the food as a new sin tax as well. Yeah. Um, and that's also going to have some kind of an impact on, on the consumer. Yeah, well, there you have it. That's exactly what we're talking about going up on air. Mm. So this is, this is that list that mm. goes on. So mm. as we said before, that nah, doesn't look too bad, but now let's keep adding. And yeah. we're adding, and we're adding. It aggregates, it aggregates, it's doesn't it? It's getting bigger. There's yeah. 35 cents for your washing powder that you perhaps, you know, were... It's quite uh, a not, bit. I mean, everything has yeah, gone meat. up on this list here. Which Fre is even fresh, yeah, I mean, fresh, okay, vegetables, no, but I mean, other things. And I think the other thing that's quite, that, that hasn't really been discussed is that Remember that we don't have price control, price rationalization yeah. in this country, Leanne, and, and, and the viewers. So the cost of your bread basket or the cost of your, you know, your grocery basket, which is you know, you, how we calculate our con consumer price index, is really wildly discretionary. Um, you don't go to, most supermarkets have their own discretion about how much they're going to charge. So, you know, 10 rands in one place, 11 rands in another place. So, which means that this discretion is going to be even wider um, with the VAT, with the VAT that's come, in, that's come in. And I think that what we need to go back to is also a situation where you, call, you know we go back to price regulation in a much more robust way. Yeah. Um, I think the P Competition Commission and so on. And th what we used to have, which were food boards and food control, food pricing boards, food regulatory, sector regulatory um, commissions, have not, have not been able to really bring that to heel. I think that the, the, the variances in prices make it very difficult for the consumer to plan efficiently. Yeah, quite, quite, quite incredible. And, and just uh, finally, as we, as we wrap up, mm -hmm. what goes up must come down. But that does not apply to VAT. That does really it? happens. I it mean, never I think does. In, I mean, in the UK, they, 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 they took it up to 20%. I don't think it's come down since. Um, and, and I mean, this is why a lot of countries have been very hesitant around the idea of having VAT because it's not something that it, it's, it's, it becomes an elasticated mechanism, usually going upwards for states to try to recover costs and to try to make up their tax deficit. And I do think that we need to explore different ways over and beyond VAT because, yeah. I mean, VAT doesn't work very very well for developing countries um, and developing economies such as ours. It usually does um, end up punishing the people who are the lower, the, the lowest income, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Ah, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for Thanks. coming in. Uh, Lebuchang Diopelopeko is an economic analyst uh, and also a social activist talking to us here about that VAT increase. And we are all going to feel the impact of this, whether it's social, business, everybody is feeling this pinch. So do stay with us here on Morning Live. We're going to continue to unpack what's been happening and how this is going to affect the workers, the basic workers out there. You and I 
and everybody is uh, going to the shops and spending a little bit more. But not only that, it's whether you are getting your cell phone account, whether you're getting your electricity, everything is going up. We are going to be speaking to Labour after this. Do stay tuned.